Hello. <laughs> ah. Stephen Cox YouTube channel sponsored by VMAC air compressor. Air when you need it. Hello everybody, my name is Stephen Cox and welcome to my shop. Woo! VMAC. I'm going to start a series because a lot of you guys have reached out to me on messages and asked my opinions on a couple of things and it involves getting into the mechanic field. Either Hey, I'm a young guy, I'm an older guy, I wanna make the jump into the mechanic field, what suggestions do you have for me? Also, I have guys writing me that are about to start their own mobile mechanic service or just their own mechanic service in a shop, and they want to know exactly my advice, if I have any tips and tricks along the way is what I've learned. For you guys that are not familiar with who I am, I've been a professional mechanic for the last 16, 17, whatever, since 2004. I went to UTI back in 2001 for automotive and diesel technology. I have been a mechanic since 2004. I had a bunch of certifications. I was ASC double master certified up until about 2012 or something like that when I did not renew my certifications. But I have worked on automotive. I have worked on trucks. I have worked on heavy equipment. I have worked on fire trucks and fire apparatus. I have worked on natural gas, uh, compressors i have worked on liquid natural gas compression and i've worked on heavy equipment all in a professional capacity this is not just experience from my dad's or my brother-in-law's or whatever company this is all stuff that i have actually had a job or a career and been paid to do i started working for myself in 2014 and have been a mechanic for myself ever since in 2014 i started a mobile heavy equipment repair with my service truck there and did really really well so this video today i just want to talk about five ways to get new customers when you're starting off as a mechanic getting new customers can be a very intimidating thing for a lot of people and it is intimidating because you need customers and we're not all blessed with the gift of gab and everybody has their own personality and everybody has their own personality way of doing things so what i encourage you guys to do is step number one the very first thing that you need to do to get new customers is let your family and friends know that you're going to start working for yourself you can do that by making phone calls talking to your mom your dad your relatives your friends letting them all know, hey, I have started working for myself as a mechanic, I'm taking on jobs. If you would, anytime you hear about somebody needing some mechanic repairs, send them my way. What kind of repairs do you need on your vehicles? When's the last time you did your maintenances? You can come over and do them or you can have them bring them to your shop. Do this and this will start a, a small chain reaction. Hopefully it will snowball into a large chain reaction. You do one job for that friend of yours, your, you do a good job, your friend tells their other friends like, hey, I got a buddy of mine that does some work and that's a lot. Most of the mechanic shops out there in mechanic careers, guys working for themselves, started their their jobs like that. They just word of mouth, worked on some friends and family, and then the word got around and then they never had to advertise and that's it. That's their entire business. They just kept up with it and they've never spent a dollar on advertising and it's been super successful for them. Now there are some caveats to that. If you're gonna do this business, you have to treat it like a business. You've got to charge accordingly. You cannot afford to do things for free just because you've been best friends with a guy for 20 years. If your friend doesn't understand that, then they might not ever understand that and they're just not gonna be a customer of yours. You have to be able to identify that and not go down that road. It's very, very difficult to work with friends and family in that capacity because if anything goes wrong, you have to try to salvage that relationship and something's gonna have to give. Don't let any, if a family or friend is having the hard times and they need help use your own judgment but when you're starting out you do not have time to help them to do that now there is a certain amount of you need a reputation you've got to get the word out there to people that you can work on it so cutting a discount for this one time you know to get the ball rolling is okay as an example if you're once you've sat down and you've done all of your okay, I'm gonna charge X amount per hour, I'm gonna charge X amount markup on parts. Whatever that hourly rate is, you can tell them, hey, my hourly rate is $100 an hour. Because I'm just getting my start, I will do this for you for 60 bucks an hour and only you for this job. After that, it's normal pay. And just use your best judgment, but don't let anybody take advantage of you. It happens a lot and most family and friends, they don't realize they're doing it. They're not setting out to take advantage of you and 
try to do anything. They're just looking at it like, hey, my buddy helps me out, I help him out. But whenever you're doing a professional, doing that in a professional capacity, it changes the whole paradigm of that. It changed that whole mentality that you have between that friendship. To me, none of my really close, true friends would ever bring me anything and just assume that I would give them a discount or work on it for free. And all of my close friends expect to pay 100% of what I normally charge other people. Because when I hire my buddies and my friends to do jobs for me, I don't ask for a discount. I ask them what their normal rate is and I pay them their normal rate. If it's a subcontracting job, then I always bill their time out at their normal rate and then mark up accordingly on my end. So that's one fantastic way that you can get customers right off the bat and your phone is probably full of people that own vehicles that need work. So number two, create, use online social media to your advantage. It's free. You can get on Craigslist, you can get on Facebook Marketplace, you can get on Instagram, you can create profiles like that just for your business and a small description of what you're gonna work on. If you're gonna do heavy equipment, you say you know, Joe Bob's heavy equipment repair. If you're mobile, Bo jo uh, Joe Bob's mobile heavy equipment repair. If you just wanna work on diesel trucks, Joe Bob's diesel truck, you know, bro dozer, service extraordinaire, or whatever. And then you have something in the list, like what you wanna do, you say I can do oil changes, maintenances, brakes, um, suspension, steering. If you have diagnostic equipment, you can perform diagnostics. And don't think for a minute that you have to have every single tool under the sun before you can start doing this. Just take the job that you're capable of doing and explain to the customer, if they want you to, it's like, hey, can you rebuild the engine and transmission for me? No, when you're first starting off, you do not have enough capital, you don't have the facility, you don't have enough reputation and credit or whatever to pull an engine out and rebuild it. Now, if you came out of the field, you've been a mechanic for a little while and you've got some tools and everything, then of course, you're probably gonna be qualified enough to do that. But if you're just starting in this and you have a very, very small amount of experience, only take the jobs that you need to do. As an example, one, it's really, really bright, so it's gonna wash out. But this was the first, what I call, serious service truck that I had. Now, notice it says heavy equipment on the side, and there's no crane. So how was I successful being a mobile heavy equipment mechanic without a crane? Everything on heavy equipment's a crane. Some of the hydraulic cylinders are hundreds if not thousands of pounds. It's because I only did the job that I was capable of doing and I would explain that to the customer. If a customer came up, hey, can you do, can you remove the tracks off my blah, blah, blah dozer? I would tell them, I don't have a crane in my truck, but if you have an excavator out there, I have you know some straps and chains and everything. As long as I can use your excavator, I can do the job. But if you don't, and you'd rather me not use your excavator, that's not the job scope that I can do right now. And they'll say, okay, well, what can you do? Well, I can do AC work, I can do electrical, I can do fluid leaks, I can do uh, engine diagnostics, I can do engine repairs, you know, small engine repairs, and gasket leaks, um, water pumps, thermostats, uh, fuel injectors, things of that nature. Only, there's nothing wrong with taking the smaller work and only doing the smaller work. In actuality, you're probably gonna make a lot more money doing that because it's a much, much quicker kind of blow and go uh, style of mechanicing. You leave yourself available to go out and be able to do these smaller jobs that a lot of these larger companies don't really like doing or they charge so much money that the owner of the equipment or the truck just can't afford to get it fixed. As, a, as an example, if you call Caterpillar or Kirby Smith or one of these big name heavy equipment companies, just to get them to come out and visually actually look at it, it's gonna cost customer about six to 700 bucks. They're gonna charge you six to $700 to come out and replace one fuse to fix your lighting system. That's where you come in. You can go out there and you still charge mileage and everything to get out there. You go out, you find the fuse, you replace it, and you skedaddle and two or 300 bucks, you came in way under the mark versus the other guys. And in equipment world, they know that. On trucks and vehicles and cars, it's a little more difficult, but you can still have the vehicles and, um, and do a lot of the lighter maintenances and things really, really quickly. So put that kind of stuff in your description, say the name of your shop or your personal name, what you're offering, and some description of the type of work that you're gonna do or be willing to do. Number three, start a YouTube channel. Have no intentions of it ever getting views, of ever amassing a following, making money off YouTube. The only thing the YouTube channel is for is for you to promote your services. That's it. 
Use social media to promote what you are doing. If you have, it doesn't matter what kind of mechanic work that you do, every single day, take a little video and some photos. Customer's car came in for an oil change. When, you, when was your last oil change? Question mark. Things like that. You're going to inspire people to think about their vehicles and their equipment and things that they have that need work. They see you actually doing the work. There's a huge disconnect between the average consumer and what a mechanic actually does. The average person does not get to see what a mechanic really does. And they, they've all, we've all had horror stories of mechanics, you know, not doing a good job or doing a disservice to the customer. And it's, I'm a mechanic and it's even happened to me. It happens, it happens in every single industry. It's not just mechanics for you guys that are sitting there, you know, beating that mouse. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> it happens in every single industry. So use YouTube and Instagram and all these other social media sites to promote your business. And if you don't get a huge following, that's not the point. The point is to be able to come up to a new customer and hand them a business card or hand them some sort of information and say, I know you don't know me, Check out my YouTube channel, check out my Instagram. I have a lot of the mechanical repairs that I've done over the past. You can see what kind of mechanic I am. That gives the person a, a really, really interesting way to get to know you. It's a very comfortable way to get to know you because they don't have to sit there and question what you're doing while you're doing it. Most of the time, if a customer or person sees you doing something and it doesn't look right or they don't understand, they're not gonna ask you about it. One, they don't wanna be embarrassed and more importantly, they really don't wanna piss you off because they're afraid if they piss you off, you're not gonna fix their stuff or worse, you're gonna cost them money. Utilizing social media is going to be extremely, extremely imperative to your business from now into the future. Social media is not going away. I know a lot of us wish it would go away, but it's just gonna be around to stay for quite a while. Use it to your advantage. Even if you do not have a social media account, just create them, they're free to create. And start putting shorter, short videos up talking about the repairs. Make sure you are in the video. They can see your face in the video. So that way when the person sees you, they meet you, they shake your hand, they watch your Instagram, your YouTube channel, and they say, hey, this guy did a starter on this whatever it was. Oh, he did an oil change. And you put little questions like that. Hey, you know, doing an oil change for a customer. And when was the last time you had your oil change? Doing a tune up for this customer on a whatever it is. When was the last time you had a tune up done? Give me a call today and, and let me know. That kind of stuff. It's very, very powerful marketing and it's free. It's the most powerful marketing that you can possibly do in my opinion. You can shell out thousands and thousands of dollars for local marketing like most local businesses do and get varied results. But with the social media, you can actually have people ship vehicles to you from out of state just to get you to work on it. It happens all the time. If you don't believe me, call any successful diesel shop out there that specializes in Ford Power Strokes and ask them how often somebody ships an older Ford Power Stroke just to them, just so that shop can work on it. It's a fantastic way to get the start in the career. So. Start your YouTube channel, and maybe, if you're like me, that's how I got my start. When I started my mobile heavy equipment repair company, and when I had new customers, I'd hand them a business card. It had youtube.com forward slash thinks4785. Right there, that's the uh, channel name for you guys, that, or that's the actual channel website that you plug into the internet browser to find my channel. Had that link on the bottom, and I'd hand it to them, and I'd say, hey, you know, my name is Stephen Cox. I'm a mobile heavy equipment repair. I have a mobile heavy equipment repair company. I was in the area. I stopped by your business. Blah, blah, blah. We start doing some niceties and stuff, and at the end, I would hand them a business card and say, there's a YouTube link on the bottom. I'm not sure if you're familiar with YouTube or not, but that's just a link to my channel. If you type that in, I have videos posted on there showing some of the repairs that I do. That way you can tell what kind of quality of work I do and if it's the right fit for your company. And it's a very powerful tool. Even older guys will really appreciate that. I've had several customers that were 50, 60, 70 year old gentlemen that had been in the equipment business for decades and decades and decades and have never spent not one second on YouTube, but looked up my channel because they didn't understand, they never realized they can actually see a mechanic working on stuff and they can pretty much judge you 
based on the work that you can do without them ever actually having to pay you to do it on their stuff. Paying a brand new, you know, a brand new to you or brand new to them mechanic, it puts an uneasy feeling in your stomach. You don't know if this, you know, you don't know if the guy's just going to rip you off. You don't know if the guy knows what he's doing. He could destroy all your equipment or he could fix all of your equipment. So utilize social media to the maximum advantage that you can. Number four, in my opinion, this is probably the easiest and best way to get customers, but it's not for everybody. And I just call it the walk-in, okay? It's cold calling, the, the walking into a business that you don't know anybody there. It's very, very difficult for some people. If you are not good with talking to people, there is, there's a million YouTube channels to watch. All you have to do up here in the search bar is like how to talk to people. Start practicing by having little conversations with the cashiers at the places that you go. If you go to a fast food place, you go to a restaurant, you go to anywhere, you start a small conversation with people and it's gonna be a little awkward at first and you're gonna kind of, you know, have that conversation go a little weird sometimes, but that's all part of the conversation. And even if you're the perfect gift of gab person, the perfect salesman, you're still gonna get tripped up every now and then. So it's just damn good practice. Now, what I mean by walk-in, the most powerful way that I got customers was driving by and seeing a business that I thought was the size of business that probably didn't have their own mechanic on staff, but large enough to where I would have plenty of work with them. There are a lot of landscaping companies, a lot of demolition companies, a lot of dirt work companies. Remember, I was doing mobile heavy equipment repair, so I kind of specialized in only heavy equipment and you know, diesel trucks. You find these businesses and you walk into the front door. Make sure you're dressed nice. If you have a uniform, for your business. If not, go to any Goodwill. There's a million shirts on the shelves that are perfectly fine. Grab you two or three of those shirts, go to an embroidery place, have some little patches with your names, uh, with your name embroidered on it, and then some other kind of patch with your company logo or whatever. If at anything else, as long as you have some sort of patch with your name on it, a lot of times that's all they need. I had switched to my t-shirts, my get out and fix something t-shirts, they seem to work fine. If you have your name on it, more power to you. Have some sort of professional looking shirt and clean. Do not go in there with any grease stained shirt. They understand that you're a mechanic, but they don't want to see you look like a mechanic when you walk into the business for the first time. You need to dress and appear like this is important to you because it is important to you. It's your livelihood. Walk in dressed well. Walk in, you know, with clean blue jeans on, with your work boots on, and a nice button-up shirt, clean cut. If you're gonna walk into these businesses, I always set a day, a specific set of days during the week that I was gonna go out, and that's all I did. I didn't work on anything because I didn't wanna get all nasty and dirty and walk into a customer's place. So I would walk into the front door, and if the owner was there, you're doing, your, you're doing a thousand percent better. If you happen to walk into a receptionist or an office manager or a secretary, whatever you call the, um, uh, the people in the front office, it's very, very simple. You just walk in and you say exactly what you're there for. As an example, I'd come in, it's like, hello, my name is Stephen Cox. I have a mobile heavy equipment repair company called TSR. I was in the area and I would like to speak to whoever is in charge of your equipment maintenance. And it's a sometimes like, oh, okay, well, that's, you know, uh, Brandon over here, or Billy or Bob or whatever the hell his name is. Or they would kind of look at you like a dog and I, huh? So if they look at you kind of crazy, like they don't really understand what you're doing, tell them, I would tell them, I'm a mechanic. I have a mobile heavy equipment repair company. I would like to speak to whoever is in charge here at this company that signs off on the equipment getting repaired. Like who's in charge of your equipment? and just leave it at that. And they would say, oh, that's so-and-so. And I was like, fantastic, may I speak to them, please? And it's like, oh, well, um, that's by appointment only, which never freaking happened in a heavy equipment repair or in a heavy equipment job. They would just say, oh, that's so-and-so, he's not available right now, can I take a message? Like, absolutely, you know, here's my business card, if you would, just tell him I would like to speak to him about repairing y'all's equipment or repairing your vehicles. You leave, call back later that afternoon. If you don't get a hold of him, come back in a couple of days and you just come back once a week until you finally run into the right person. After that, once you actually run into that correct person, I always kept it short and sweet. You don't need to go into a 47 minute long detail about your life uh, story because the guy doesn't care. You need to be quick, concise, and straight to the point. When you meet the person and you shake the person's hand and you finally get a hold of that person that has the control to approve 
you're you know, paying you to do the work. You come in, you do the same thing. You say, hello, my name is Stephen Cox. I have a mobile heavy equipment repair company called TSR. I service this area and I wanted to stop in and let you know that I'm available if you need it. What kind of equipment problems are you having right now? And I'd go, you know, I had this excavator that's doing this deal and there you go. If it's something that you can work on, always leave it up to them. If they say there's any problem with any piece of equipment, ask all your probing questions. How long has the, um, how long has the problem been persisting? What have y'all done about it? Who else has worked on it? things of that nature and that's a whole nother video itself that i'm going to do but you get to the probing questions and the probing answers and once you get enough information you tell them it's like great i can work on that right now and most of the time they're not used to that they're used to everything having to be scheduled nobody wants to do anything right now be the different mechanic when you come into these places and tell them once that one question is a very powerful question what type of equipment problems are you having right now what type of vehicle problems are you having right now? Because I guarantee if they own more than two or three pieces of equipment, they got something broke on it. If they own more than a couple of used trucks, they've got something that needs work on it. If they've got a fleet of cars or whatever, they've got something that needs to be worked on. If he, even if they say, no, I think we're in pretty tip top shape. It's like, okay, well, what kind of maintenance plan do y'all have on those? Are y'all handling your own maintenance? Are you going to a shop? And it's like, oh, well, we take them to here and we've been taken there for a very long time and they've been fantastic and they do all our maintenance. And just look at him, it's like, hey, that's great, man. I'm glad to hear that. I'm, it makes me really, really happy to know that there's another mechanic service out there that's doing fantastic work. I tell you what, if, they ever, if they're ever too busy to handle everything that you need or anything else happens, I'd love to leave you my business card. Feel free to contact me 24 hours a day. And say, like, okay. So you don't want to tear down the other company or try to pick apart the other company that they've been happy with because you're going to lose that customer. You never want to bad talk other, other mechanics and other shops out there. Even if they bring up a shop that you know is a bunch of hacks and you hate that shop, stay reserved. And when they ask you about it, it's like, oh yeah, what do you think about um, Joe Bob's auto repair down the road over here? And they kind of do that. And you know Joe Bob and you know he's a hack and you know he's a scam. You just say, you know what? I wouldn't bring my vehicles to them. I'm sure some people have had success with it, but I would choose, you know, if, if it was my personal choice, I would just go somewhere else. And if they ask you why, just tell them, like, you know, it's just my preference to go somewhere else. I've heard about XYZ shop uh, that does much better uh, work. And I believe that I can do uh, a much better service to your company. Leave it at that. Don't go into details and do not drag down other pieces or other companies. So walking in is the, it's, it's a extremely powerful for multiple reasons. One, just shaking a guy's hand and looking them straight in the eye and then explaining to them what you do. They know who you are and most business owners that have been doing this for a while, they, if they're the owner or they're the guys that have been uh, doing this from the start, they will they will appreciate that so much. And and so often, I ran into guys and owners that have never had a mechanic walk in with that kind of hustle and that kind of dedication to try and build their company. It really really impresses these guys, and they're more likely willing to give throw you a bone to try you out to see if you're any good, just to try to help you with that business because it's going to be mutually beneficial. And there's a lot of, believe it or not, there's a lot of really nice business owners out there that will love to try to help you if they know that you're doing everything that you can to help. So if you can do the walk-ins, great. If not, there, there's other steps. There's, really, there's a reason there's five steps in this video. Now the fifth way to get customers, and I don't really like this way too much. I think it's a little too expensive, especially nowadays. It's paid advertising. Um, when you're first starting off, I do not believe your money is best used for paid advertising, not for the mechanic field. There are other businesses out there where that's a necessity, and I understand that, but for mechanic work, you it's incredibly expensive to do any kind of advertising. Local radio is gonna cost you anywhere from uh, 500 bucks up to you know $10,000 to run a few ads. TV is way exponentially, way out of the market and out of the budget for, an, uh, for a beginner. It's way out of the budget for someone just starting their business off. And there's other, you know, there's mailers that you can do, door hangers, things like that. Some guys have had success with those. I just don't really like that 
type of advertising. I believe the word of mouth, the social media is the way to go and it's gonna be a lot more powerful tool for you. Now, once you've developed your business to a certain point or you're expanding your business into new areas, then advertising can be really, really beneficial. But you need to advertise in the market that you want to hit. As an example, in the heavy equipment world, you want to make sure that you're advertising in heavy equipment magazine or things that are gonna to pertain to your area. Advertising in, in nationally published magazines is not really gonna help you in your smaller town in Oklahoma. Not that many people are gonna get that magazine there and you don't want some guy calling you from New York to do a road call when you're 17 states away or how many states there are between here and New York. So you, it can be, but I just don't think the paid advertisement is gonna be really that bang for the buck. I have done it in the past with door hangers. I've spent a thousand dollars to have somebody go out and put you know little door hangers on it. I got like one or two calls. And in my experience, when it comes to mechanic work, most of the customers that you're gonna get from that kind of advertisement are gonna be um, price shoppers. They're gonna be the one that wants to get that 1999 oil change or that uh, $50 front axle brake job or anything like that. So it just doesn't work out that well. It is an option to do, but there's, there's, other, area, there's other avenues to spend your money on that's gonna be a lot more beneficial to you. If you're just die hard, you have to spend money on something and you really want to spend money on advertising, the, the best advertising I could possibly think of is probably going to be local radio, um, local newsletters, local newspapers, local publications, things of that nature. But I'm wait for today's world, social media trumps all of that. I mean, I would rather you create a Facebook page, create a YouTube channel, create an Instagram account, and then contact those companies pay them directly to market your business in the area that you want. A lot of people don't realize you can actually pay YouTube advertising to only advertise in a city or in a general area. So like I'm in the North Texas area, I can pay YouTube and Google just to advertise in the North Texas area. And it's much cheaper that way. The farther you spread out your advertising, the more expensive it gets and the less return you're gonna get on a service-based job. Now, if you're selling parts and things over the internet, you're gonna to need to do some advertising. But as far as mechanic work, I just don't think it's that good of an investment. So guys, that's quick five tips and some advice that I have, some things that I had to figure out the hard way. I didn't have anybody teaching me this. I didn't have a mentor when it came to this. I just kind of figured it out on my own. That's five tips. I hope it helps you. Remember, next month, I'm gonna be at Con Expo at the VMAC booth. I will be there March 10th, 11th, and 12th. There are the times I'll be shaking hands and showing you guys some incredible new compressors from VMAC. I hope to see you there. Justin with Good Land is also going to be there. We're going to be cutting up and having a good time. And if you are there, make sure you hit us up on March 11th, 4 to 6 o'clock, the Beer and Wine Social. Y'all can actually see the rare occasion when I might actually drink a beer. I hope you liked the video, guys. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and congratulations, I got my comments back. You can now comment down below. Get out and fix something.